strongly objects to the tightening strong stranglehold on the free flow of information taking place today in Russia. Further, I'd like to take this opportunity to reiterate that we support the seasoned executive we appointed to lead RFERL's effort to keep audiences in Russia and elsewhere apprised of the news in spite of their government's efforts to quash it. Steve, please provide us an update. Sure. Thank you, Governor. There, there has been there has been a lot of inaccurate information circulating here in the U.S. and in Russia about the future of our Russian language service, Radio Swoboda. So I'd like to set the record straight. For more than a year, we have been looking at all of our 28 language services to understand and identify our target audiences. Our Russian service has been part of this process. And our work on the audience in Russia indicates that our target audience urban educated people from their 20s to their 40s want more from us. For some time, we have been working on plans to revitalize Radio Swoboda. We are currently building a state-of-the-art video and digital facility in Moscow, and we believe that our future success in Russia will be on digital media, internet, mobile, and social, with video, audio, and text content. We also decided that our Russian service director should be resident in Moscow at the epicenter of the news on which we report and where the great majority of the folks in our Russian service reside and work. Also about a year ago, shortly after we started this planning process, we learned that the Russian mass media law would be amended to prohibit foreign ownership of broadcast signals. This law is very similar, as Governor Linton pointed out, is very similar to the law we have here in the United States and to those of many Western countries. The new law will go into effect next month on November 10th. Since learning of the impending change in the law, we consulted several law firms to explore if we could continue to hold our broadcast license to own and operate our AM radio station in Moscow. We also explored a deal with a Russian businessman with media holdings aimed at keeping our AM programming on the air. Unfortunately, there was no deal to be struck. In August, we were advised by our longtime Moscow council that there was no alternative um, to compliance with the new law. We do not, however, view this as a calamity. To the contrary, we see this as an opportunity to improve and strengthen our Russian service and to accelerate our plans to move to digital platforms. Truth be told, in the world in which we live today, AM radio is a bygone era. The internet, mobile, and social media are not only the future, they are very much the present. If we are to succeed in reaching those young, urban, educated Russians, who are at the forefront of, ch of change in their country and who will lead Russia in the future. It will not be on a weak AM signal that can only be heard in parts of Moscow. It will be on digital media where our tar target audience already lives, works, and plays. Sadly, the cessation of our AM signal and the switch to a digital service requires new ways of working with fewer people and some people with different skill sets. We thank and honor the work of those who have left us. Nevertheless, we owe it to our mission and to the American taxpayers who fund us to employ our funds in the most efficient and impactful way that we can, and that is exactly what we are doing. Some of our critics claim, quite incorrectly, that we are withdrawing or retrenching in Russia. Nothing could be further from the truth. We are adapting to change conditions with a new strategy and new focus. We are not decreasing the amount of money we are spending on Radio Swoboda, not by one penny. We, sp <clears throat> we spend more on Radio Swoboda than we spend on any of our other services. Indeed, with our new approach, we'll be able to spend more, on our, uh, more of our budget directly on programming and new equipment. Anyone who thinks that we are retreating or shrinking in the face of a hostile Russian administration need look no further than to the hiring of our new Russian service director, Masha Gessen. Masha holds both Russian and U.S. citizenship and has, has had success and acclaim as a journalist, editor, author, and leader. She's a former Neiman Fellow in journalism at Harvard University 
and Masha's latest book, The Man Without a Face, The Unlikely Rise of that is, is The Man Without a Face, The Unlikely Rise of Vladimir Putin. In the book, she presents a portrait of a ruthless politician, underestimated by friends and enemies alike, who dismantled Russia's democratic and free market reforms to establish himself as a totalitarian leader. She documents how Putin seized control of media, sent political rivals and critics into exile or to the grave, and smashed the country's fragile electoral system, concentrating power in the hands of his cronies. Now, does that sound like we're retreating? I think not. Masha Gessen is precisely the person we need if Radio Swoboda is to survive and thrive. This is a woman who is brilliant and fearless. She is unafraid to speak truth to power, and she will lead the change that will make us better. I am honored that she is now my colleague. We have just embarked down this new and exciting path to our future, and we are very enthused about the direction and our future, but we need some time to transform and retool. To those who are inclined to judge us fairly, I would ask the, you to withhold your judgment until our transformation has been put in place and has had a chance to take root. We've just begun. We're very confident about the future and very excited about where we will go. Thank you. Thank you, Steve.